Hi everyone, um, welcome to this lesson. Um, this is a biomechanical lesson and, and my favourite of them all, if I'm honest. Okay. Um, this, if you cannot understand these three images, these are all levers. Okay. Um, this lesson has to be a 15 minute uh, talk over only because of the amount of time I have to do this. Um, as the software that's allows 15 minutes. So, a lever is a rigid bar. So, if you look at the top left of the seesaw, a lever is a rigid bar. Okay. And it we use levers in order to move things, okay? For example, if you look at the wheelbarrow on the right, we, it allows us to move heavy loads quite easily from place to place. That's the idea of a lever, okay? And in our bodies, we also have these levers. Okay, so that's an inquiry, all right? You're gonna have to describe each classification of lever, <coughs> apply them to sporting examples, um, and within the body, as well as explain what a mechanical advantage is. <clears throat> okay, I'm not going to ask you to do these, all right, but we need to remember each classification of levers. So there are three classifications, all right. Um, the best way to remember it is FLE equals one, two, three. It's a nice little rhyme to try and help you remember how each one is laid out, okay, how each lever is represented. So, FLE x123 is the key, that's my little saying. All right, first class lever. All right, so don't panic at this, it is quite a lot of information to take in, but it is an easy way to remember it. So, FLE equals 123. If you remember that saying, remember F is equals 1. So, F equals 1. FLE equals 123. So, F, so any FLE refers to what's in the middle of each diagram. So F is in the middle of this di of this diagram of this lever. Okay. Load and effort are on either side. Okay. Remember that seesaw we had in the picture one. This is what represents a first class lever. Okay. So a load is depicted by the square image. Fulcrum is like the pivot. Okay. So like a hinge of a door is always a triangular shape and the effort is a directional arrow. It shows which way the force is acting on it. Okay. In the body, for example, the first class lever is at the top of the atlas and axis of the neck. So when you pivot your head forwards and backwards, you're using a first class lever to do this. Okay. The sternocleidomastoid at the back okay, of the head um, allows muscles to be pulled back okay but to counteract that the weight of the head at the front means that the head is balanced all right so you can see this from the diagram here all right so in a sporting example we'd have Cristiano Ronaldo heading a football okay he's using the pivot of his head to apply force to the ball okay moving on second class lever all right so L is second, okay, so L, FLE equals 1, 2, 3, so the numbers 1, 2, 3 refer to the classification of lever, therefore load is in the middle, FLE, so L in the middle, for the second class lever, alright, notice how the pivot is at the end, so F has to go up, and imagine that bar, this rigid bar here, is moving clockwise, is moving clockwise so that bar the effort is pushing that up and over you have to try and imagine that but at this time we've got a stable lever so that load and effort are the same force right now keeping it stable so where is this in the body all right so we're looking at the leg okay we're on our tiptoes imagine okay go onto your tiptoes it is quite difficult to hold that position all right the fulcrum is the ball balls of your feet and the balls of your toes. Okay, the load is the actual weight of the leg itself. The effort comes from the gastrocnemius at the back contracting to maintain that position, that plantar flexion, if you remember from previous lessons. Okay. You're probably wondering when do I do this in a sworn situation? Well you can do it at the beginning of the badminton match, okay, so you're prepared for the return um, return of service. You know, it could be where you're taking a free throw in basketball when you're on your tiptoes in order to gain maximum height 
to throw the ball into the basket. All right, you can probably think of others in your own sports. But that is a second class lever. Remember, L is in the middle. Third class lever. Okay, so now we've done F and we've done L. Now we're on to E, so number three. Third class lever where F is in the middle. All right, the load is at the end and the fulcrum is there. So compared to a second class lever, the load and effort have swapped around. As I've mentioned here, sporting implements can be increase the length of the effort arm, which will increase the force of that, that an object such as a ball strap. So for example, if we take a tennis racket, okay, um, and Federer is playing a shot, okay, the idea is the racket increases the length of the lever, okay, and that can apply a greater force onto the ball. Alright, the longer the resistance arm, the greater speed can be generated. So the weight of the racket itself is quite heavy, but the effort comes from your arm, all right? So therefore, we've got a third class lever here. When the ball hits the racket, it's going to be a greater speed than if you hit the ball with your hand, okay? It's common sense, but a lot of people don't really take it into consideration they play sport because of the level of enjoyment they have, all right? Within the body, the third class lever is, an easy example is a bicep curl, okay? So the elbow hinge joint acts as the fulcrum, the bicep contracting is the effort, and the load could be, for example, holding a weight. All right. So if the weight was very heavy and strong, and a lot, um, the biceps have to counteract this by contracting, okay, to maintain that position or main, contract a greater force than the weight is in order to pull it up. All right. So. That is your sporting example, is a bicep curl, all right? Levers, some levers are more advantageous than others, okay? As we saw earlier, okay, this lever here, where the load's in the middle and the effort's at the end, is a lot more advantageous than this lever here, okay? I'm gonna give you a simple example. If you walk over to your door, okay, and you've got the door open and um, you push near the hinge, is that easier or harder than pushing away from the hinge at the very end of the door? Of course it's more difficult than at the end of the door, okay, because the distance between you and the lever, the fulcrum, at, and the load is changed, so the load of, of the door is probably in the middle of the door, whereas if you push near the hinge, okay, you're pushing in between the load and the the pivot, the fulcrum. However, if you push at the end of the door, the other side of the load and the hip, and the pivot, and the hip fulcrum, sorry, it's so much easier. Okay. If you find that a bit tricky, please replay my words there and have a go yourself. All right. So mechanical advantage, the effort arm. So what I'm talking about, effort arm, is the distance between the effort and the fulcrum. So looking at this here to this here okay and the load arm apologies okay or what is known as resistance arm is the distance between the load and the fulcrum for example the first class the third class lever this one here the load arm is longer than the effort arm okay so we're looking at mechanical advantage this allows the lever to move a large load over a short distance Remember back to the wheelbarrow at the very start, that is an advantage, okay? Wheelbarrows were designed as a second class lever in order to allow us to move heavy loads over a distance more easily. Otherwise, you can have a lot of back pain. Mechanical advantage is effort divided by load, okay? So I'm talking about those distances there. Here's just a simple math mathematical problem. If my load weighed 100 newtons and I applied an effort of 150, Newton's using a second class lever, as an example, what would be my mechanical advantage? Okay, so all you'd have to do is the effort divided by the load, okay, like we've done just here, effort divided by load. My mechanical advantage is 1.5 Newtons. Remember, it's in force, so anything to do with force from science we regard to Newtons, okay? Before we do... Um, practice exam questions. Okay, I'm just going to quickly run back 
through that because a lot of you may find this this is very new content so it's a bit bit more tricky all right if you do have time please pause the video now to try and draw each classification of lever off by half using this beauty of an equation f of e equals one two three it's the kick okay um this is paramount for you to remember each classification of lever for first class lever the fulcrum is in the middle for second class lever the load is in the middle for the third class lever the effort is in the middle okay so fulcrum is in the middle so it has to be a first class lever at the very beginning we use the seesaw as the example okay cannot use this in the exam because oh, clearly it's not a sporting example if there was a sport known as seesawing okay it would probably be one of the most dullest sports in the world the load arm can be referred to as the resistance arm okay that's what i said just a moment ago all right so if these two are of identical um, forces and distances away from the fulcrum um for example we had a 15 50 newton uh, person sat here and a 50 newton person sat here it would balance out like this. However, if the effort arm was longer or the effort was greater than the load or load arm, obviously it would tip towards the left anti clock in an anti clockwise direction. Okay. Remember that example of the header? So that is the first class example. Alright, very straightforward. Second class lever. Alright, so this is always a mechanical advantage because the effort arm, see the effort is always further away from the fulcrum than the load. So it's always an advantage. Okay, please remember that. So every time you apply an effort to move the load, okay, it's always easier. If I move the load closer to the fulcrum, it's very easy to topple it over. Okay. However, if I move the load further closer to the effort, but just this side where the mouse is here, it's more difficult to push it over clockwise okay so that f has to apply more force to get it over because the load is further away from the fulcrum okay just to reiterate the balls of our feet is a very good example of a second class lever um just off the top of my head uh, the long jump is a very good example here of where the second class lever comes into action all right because when you jump off that board okay at the end of the run you're on your tiptoes and that gastrocnemius is applying a huge force through that muscle to overcome that load okay and really propel the body in the air and in this example where the foot is going in this diagram here on the right it's going left okay in an anti-clockwise direction that is the movement that's occurring all right third class lever again effort in the middle because it's in the middle, it's always a disadvantage. A third class lever is always a disadvantage because the load arm, the load is further away from the fulcrum than the effort. So therefore you have to apply a huge amount of effort in order to move this load. All right, so for the example of the door I had earlier, this is where you're pushing near the hinge, okay? Because the weight of the door is very hard to overcome. So, an example of this obviously is the bicep curl okay another example you could use would be Federer obviously with the tennis racket okay where the load is the racket itself possibly and the contact the ball at the same time the effort comes from the pectorals okay and the deltoid um, producing an adduction if you remember that movement there adduction of the uh, arm towards the midline of the body during that shot okay and the fulcrum obviously is the shoulder joint okay remember the effort is where the where the muscle attaches to that joint so in that case for the shot it'll be onto the humerus bone okay in the upper arm okay just to reiterate okay mechanical advantage effort divided by load we're always looking at that distance between effort and fulcrum and load and fulcrum that is known as the arm so the effort arm is the distance between effort and fulcrum and the load arm is the load and fulcrum okay i have said that before but just reiterating okay i'm running out of time so please when you get time 
Have a go at these exam questions.